Hello, hello everyone, it is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool and I am so excited you guys are here with me because we are gonna talk all about water sensory table ideas. So I know water play is so important in the classroom because it leads to lots of problem solving and fine motor. You can integrate tons of different math and literacy skills but this is boring, just having just plain water and it gets old, right? Like water and just your regular tools. So tonight or today, depending on when you're watching, I'm gonna share with you some really, really fun water play or water sensory table ideas that you can do in your classroom um, with your little learners. Now, if you can't do like your entire water table, try using one of these under the bed, like smaller, like plastic tubs or you can do those paper like I also use like the smaller probably probably about one or two to a kid um it's like the smaller like paper holders that um upper school elementary uses you can also use those for water um little mini sensory table um mini sensory tables if you want to use them for like indoor recess and things like that so any of that you can either do in the sensory table in a bin like this or in like a smaller even like tub basically like you know those like smaller tubs that the dollar table has that basically would probably fit one kiddo those are perfect for this so i want you in the comments tell me what your favorite like if you could do one water sensory table idea like what's your favorite what is or what is your student's favorite tell us in um the comments so i have a giant tub of water right here right so let's let's go ahead and start and have some fun I have, like, I'm literally surrounded by tons of ideas. So hopefully you guys are, try one of these out. Now, I know this one is one I know a lot of people are, um, love. I've done this one before a ton in my classroom. But I'm going to show you kind of how to do it and kind of do it with a twist, add things. Because, again, if it's something your students love, we want to do it again. And we want to change it a little bit because... If you change it a little bit, um, they have to think differently and interact with, with the materials differently. So, pom-poms. Pom-poms and water are so, they're so much fun. These are just some like, uh, I would say they're probably like an inch on um, pom-poms. Again, pom-poms are great because you can get them at the dollar store. Um, Like basically anywhere, right? These are from Amazon because look, look what happens. You can squeeze them. And also when you drop, like let's say you're playing with all the pom-poms and the sensor table, you also want to dump your water at the end of every day because bacteria and all the horrible things will grow. So make sure you dump your water table at the end of every day, but don't throw the pom-poms away or whatever's inside. Let it dry and they will, they won't be perfect <laughs> as new, but they will be almost, almost good as new. So this, it looks really, Really fun and engaging. I know a lot of us have seen people do pom-poms in the sensory table, but again, we want to like do it and we want to do it again and again and again. And we want to kind of like add things with a twist. So these little, like, I think they're like lemon squeezers. They're from the Dollar Tree. These are really fun because they can squeeze. So put, what students will do is they will put the pom-poms in there and then they can squeeze them. So both of their hands will be working together, right? And there's gonna be squeezing, right? All of the squeezing motion, it's also what? Scissors, right? The open and closing these fingers for scissors. So this is also a great activity to do to strengthen those, like all those fingers for scissors skills, okay? Also, as they squeeze, they can put one in there. They can put a bunch in there again how many can they fit? Lots of math, lots of problem solving. How many can they fit? And just having tons and tons of fun. Again, these are at the dollar store. They're super, super fun. You can get them in tons of different colors. So we have little squeezers. So what else could we put in there? You could also put in there these, which again, these are great for scissor, scissor skills. These are from Lakeshore. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna scoop them, scoop them, the pom-poms up with them. Again, it's that scissor skills motion. These um, from Lakeshore have little holes in them so the water will drain out. How much fun is that, you guys? Like, so, so fun. And again, we're practicing that scissor motion, that open and close. We're making those hands 
and those fingers and those wrists really, really strong. You can also put puppets in. Okay, one, the puppets are gonna float and they can put the pom-poms in. They can dump them out. They can see how many will fit, kind of like a sink and float type of thing. How many, how many can fit on there until the puppet sinks to the ground. And what are you gonna think they're gonna do with this? They're gonna pretend it's a what? It's a cake, right? Because they pretend everything is like food and they make the food and they pretend to eat it and all the things. So put some puppets in with your pom-poms for some sensory water table play. And it doesn't have to be this rainbow one. It can be whatever one you have in your classroom. And again, puppets are really fun for water play because they're really easy to wash, okay? So you put them in there, you can play with that. Okay. And then if you have any kind of little ice cream, um, like cone, like these are from Lakeshore. These, are, these actually go with the numbers um, set. You can use these. You can use any like ice cream cone, like, um, like little containers you have. Because these look like what? They look like little ice cream, like little ice cream scoops. So you can put these in there too, and then they can make a ton of little ice cream cones with these. And again, we're seeing how many will fit, and they can dump them out. If you have, again, these are from Lakeshore. You can put have the ones with the numbers on them, and they can put that many in. You, if they don't have the numbers on them, that works too, because it kind of like a little fun, a little ice cream play, ice cream sensory play. Now, if you don't have these little ice cream cones, it's totally fine. No worries. Use, I know a lot of us have these little cupcake silicone molds because you, if you know me, you know I love these for Play-Doh trays and math. And look, they make like little cupcakes. How much fun is that? And they're gonna be counting and filling and dumping and they can also squeeze these because <laughs> they're silicone. So again, the first day, or the first couple days you have your pom-poms in your water. Just have the pom-poms and the lemon squeezers, squeezers, whatever those are called. And then the next day add maybe a new tool. You can add the little, I think these are called like handy helpers or something, the little like scissor scoops. And then you can add pom-poms another day. And then another day you can add the cupcake mold. Because again, it's the same, base activity, but we're just adding different things and taking different things out to make it change, make it more exciting. And again, they have to like interact and figure out how to use the materials differently because there's different things in here. This is one of my favorites. This is just like a super, super simple strainer, right? So they're just gonna put everything in and they can watch, watch it strain out. They can also dump, use the silicone cupcake molds and they can dump it in. I also love using these, right, for at the end. Like, let's say it's the end of the day. This is also great for you to use as a teacher. Put all of the things that are in your water table. Okay, put everything in. Hold on. We <laughs> put too many pom-poms in here. Oh, we're at one. And then you take this to the sink or take it and um, lay it out to dry somewhere. Done. And then you can take this to the sink or somewhere to dry. And then now you can dump your water. So use, use your colanders to get all the things out from your water plate. Okay, so that's the pom-pom one that we all love. A tried and true, right? So, we love that one. But what about adding some fresh fruit? So, if you have any lemons, limes that are going bad in your refrigerator, bring those into school and put them in the sensory table. One, it's going to make them smell amazing. Two, they get to interact with real food. Now, if you don't want real food in the sensory table, that is totally fine. I got you, okay? Hold on. So, I found these, these are like fake lemons. These were actually like lights at the Dollar Tree. So 
So the Dollar Tree always has all of those like little like LED lights. Take those and then pull off the little fun toppers. And then you can have a really fun sensory table with them. And again, I know some of you guys don't want to use real food or, or you can't and that's totally fine. If you can't, no worries. These are like ice cubes, those like plastic ice cubes. And look, it is just as fun without the real food as it is with the real food inside. So, real food, fake real food. Okay, and then I love, the, this is like one of those um, can strainers. These are really fun in the water table. Because it's just like, again, it's just a smaller strainer. I just got it because it was yellow. Thought it would fit like the lemon theme. Grab some funnels. Funnels are great in the water table. Where's my small cup? I had a little cup and I can't, oh. We're, we're gonna use this one. Okay. So our little cup, so our funnels. Okay, and again, we want different sizes because we wanna see how different sizes like react and we wanna see how different sizes, how much water they hold. Oh, that's a, a dead spider. That's great. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Okay. And then also, you can also put back in, again, if you have the real fruit, you can put in the lemon squeezers so they can actually squeeze the fruit. Okay, I'm not gonna squeeze it because I'm gonna use this for <laughs> another water table -like activity for you guys. And then you can also add different size scoops or ladles. Now, if you use small tools in your sensory table, they're gonna be using a, um, a, like a smaller wrist movement as they fill, right? They're just gonna be turning it smaller. Now, if they use a bigger ladle, it's using different muscles. I'm using more of what my like upper arm and my forearm, right? And especially for them, because they're little, this, they're gonna be like turning it like this because this is gonna be a really big movement for them. Again, big tools use bigger muscles. The smaller tools are gonna to use smaller muscles. So, put little tools in a couple days, and they're gonna be using more of their wrists and their fingers and their hands in this um, lower arm. If, they have, if you put in bigger tools, they're gonna to be using more of their um, upper arm and then even their shoulder too, because again, they have little hands. So these big tools are gonna to be really, really big for them. And then you can also add, where's that? I'll just use this one. So I have like just an empty orange juice container. I had a smaller one too, but I must have dropped it. Oh, here it is, found it. Again, we wanna use different size things. So we have a, again, I just, I like orange juice, so I saved the containers. I know you guys are like me and you save all your containers. So save some containers, then you have a big orange juice and a small orange juice or lemonade or use an empty juice bottle and just take off the label. That works too. And then they can fill it up and they can see how much it takes to fill it up. Fill up the big one versus the small one. They can put the different things inside, all the things. And again, a lot of this is just, again, really, really fun. And again, you can use real fruit if you want to or you can use fake fruit, okay? And then to clean up again, put everything in your colander so you can clean it up for your water play. Okay, let me clean this up. So this is a really, really fun one. You can do like a lemonade stand. You can call it just like citrus fruits. Okay, this is one that's really fun for like, when it's starting to get warmer out, Again, I'm in Missouri, so it's been cold. If you're in Florida and you lucky ducks have had nicer weather, you can do this lemonade one or orange one anytime. But this one's fun for us to do in the Midwest when it gets closer to summer and it actually gets warm again for us. Oh, and then you can also use, put these in there now. When you, and this, I had this for the lemonade one. They just put this in there with the top off 
So that way they have to fill it with the scoops. Okay, and then they can practice putting the lid on. They can practice squeezing. Again, all of the squeezing is really great for um, making those fine motor muscles really, really strong because we need fi strong fine motor muscles to have a strong pencil graft and so we can write forever when we get to second grade, right? So you don't always have to have these full and use these for all the science experiments. You can just put them in empty um, with the lid off so they can, again, practice screwing the lids on, screwing them off, again, all that wrist rotation work and filling them up. So that's really fun too. All right, so the next idea I have for you is with pool noodles. Sorry. Oh, let me tell you the thing first. So I know a lot of us have plastic eggs. And they are really fun in the water. Okay. So yours are probably, if you're students or anything like mine, they're gonna break all these off, right? Okay, so they're gonna be all broken up. What they're gonna do is they're gonna put them together in the water. And then it's just gonna be like some fun, easy playing. Again, we're gonna add the ladles back. You can, I use a lot of the same stuff for my water plate over and over and over. You can also put some pom-poms back in here so that way they have to match the pom-poms to the eggs and they can put them in. You can put in a colander if you want so that way they have to put the things in. Again, pick, you know your students. What do they like to play with in the water table? Do they like big bowls? Do they want some um, liquid measuring cups. These are always really fun. Some of your kids are gonna take the eggs apart. Some of your kids are gonna just fill up the containers you have. Different kids have different minds, so they're gonna do different things with the objects you have in your sensory table, and they're, you're, they're gonna re interact with them differently, right? So, put some eggs in, because I know we have a ton of them. And it's just really fun water sensory play. Let me get all of my things out again in my calendar because it's my favorite tool to get all the things out. See how see how easy that is to clean up? So, well, easy-ish, right? <laughs> okay. So another fun thing you can do is pool noodles. And I have an entire blog post. I have a whole nother video on what you can do with pool noodles in your classroom. Um, so pretend like this is like, pretend like I took all of my pool noodles and I just dumped them a whole bunch in. So what are some things we can do with these? So I just took pool noodles. I cut them up with just some knives. Super, super simple. So they can stack them, they can make patterns with them, okay? They're gonna see how they can balance, how they can float. Maybe they're gonna stack them up by color. Again, you can take some of the pom-poms and throw those in too, so that way they can match the colors. If you have, who has these people counters? If you have these, you know I love these. These are like, these little people counters are like a math counter, but they're literally some of my most favorite counter because you can use them for block play, you can use them for sensory play. So much fun. But you can, it's like little people at the pool. And they can put the little people on all the little sensor, or on all of the pool noodles. They can rest them on top. They can see how they float. And again, we're doing all of the, all the science here. If they put them in the middle, does it fall over? How many can they stack? So we're just gonna interact with the pool noodles and little people for a really fun water sensory play activity. So we got the pool noodles. Hold on. I'm trying to find a spot to put these guys, hold on. <laughs> Take those off. So 
another fun thing you can do in um, the water table is, it's kind of what I call like a, like a bath, right? So you're gonna take animals. You can also do this with trucks. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put some water in, or water, soap. So you're gonna put some soap in, and then you're gonna give them whisks. And what the students are gonna do is they are going to make the bubbles. And as they make the bubbles, what are they having to do? They're using their upper arms and their shoulders to make the bubbles. And then you can add in some toothbrushes. You can also add in some sponges. Now, you can add in a big sponge. You can also add in little sponges. Again, big sponges, what's gonna happen? They're gonna work their whole hand, right? And their forearm. So they're gonna use those big muscles and they can wash their little puppies, right? If they use a little sponge, what am I using? I'm using my lit, more of my fingers, so more of the smaller muscles in my hand. And I'm gonna be scrubbing my little animals, okay? So you can put in either or. Again, bigger tools work bigger muscles. Smaller tools are gonna work the small muscles. Okay, and they're just gonna scrub, 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 and they will have an absolute blast. I always did like a little pet wash. Um, again, I'm in Missouri, so when we couldn't go outside for like days in the winter, I would make little, I would use the little sensory tubs that are like half this size, and I would set up little pet washes, or these are just um, from Amazon, or you can also set up little truck washes. So you can put in your all of your trucks or vehicles, construction trucks. These are those like sand construction trucks or sand toys that you find like in the Target aisle during like the summer or whatever. They're like the bigger ones. Um, but again, just they can wash them and scrub them. They're gonna turn them. They're gonna like, again, they're gonna have a blast just scrubbing. And what are they gonna be doing? They're gonna be using all those super, super strong. They're gonna be using their fine motor muscles to make them super, super strong as they wash and they scrub. And then they will also make more bubbles with their whisks. Whisks. <laughs> so, truck wash, animal wash, all the things. Now, another thing you can do Take your water. Now we just did a whole bunch of fun things you can do with water. But if you want to make it even more fun, what you're gonna do is you are gonna going to take some metallic paint. This is the bio color from Colorations. This is like the discount school supply brand, okay? Now I don't know if all metallic paint works like this, but this again, this is the bio color from Discount School Supply. Okay, you can get it on Amazon too. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that, let's see if this is enough, and you're gonna put it in your water, I don't know if that's enough, let me put another, another chunk in. What it does is it makes, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> it makes this like metallic water, and I really hope you guys can see it on the video. Okay. All right, let me see. Can you see it? It looks almost like a potion. So it looks like little ocean waves. So if you, hopefully the bubbles will go away. And you can see, oh, you can see it, I think. So it's like a little magic ocean. And it's kind of got little like waves in it. It's the coolest thing you can do. Oh, look, <gasps> you guys can see it. How cool is that? You can also do this for sensory bottles. Um, if you saw my St. Patrick's Day sensory bottles, the gold one that has like the, the really cool waves in it, it's the gold bio color from, um, the gold bio color from Discount School Cut. But look how cool that is, you guys. <gasps> Isn't it so cool? Okay, so we got this really cool blue water, right? So it kind of looks like the ocean. So there's so many things you can add to this. So you could add like your ocean animal counters, because everybody has those, right? 
You can also add some ladles. Again, big tools or small tools. They're gonna work different. They're gonna work different muscles. I'm not gonna put all these in, or I am, because I dump everything. <laughs> okay, so we got some different measuring spoons. We want different sizes. So they can't explore measurement and volume and capacity, okay? You can also put in, I forgot to tell you guys about these. I had these over here and I forgot about them. You can also put in little, little droppers. If you're doing science experiments and your students don't know how to do droppers, put droppers in your sensory table so they can explore and practice using those science tools. I love using the, the water table or the sensory table really to practice using all of the different um, sciencing tools, right? This is this one's like a turkey baster from the dollar store. This one, and no, it's not. Um, somebody's asked if it turns your hands blue, and look, it doesn't. So cool! How cool is that? Okay, preschool teachers get very excited about <laughs> little those things, right? But your kids would just love this. And I just wanted to show you guys. So if you're if your students are using the spoon, right? They're probably what scooping and pouring, right? Do you see how my hand's not really turning? So if I'm using the spoon, I'm just like pouring, stirring. If I'm using the ladle, do you see how my wrist is doing a different movement? So you really wanna make sure you're putting in different tools in your sensory table because we want their wrists to be super, super strong. And as they use all the different tools, they're gonna to be doing different, different things with them. These smaller droppers are from Amazon. They're in my um, Amazon storefront, okay? So we have those. You can also add in um, measuring spoons. Now, I typically only add in about three. I add usually a small, a medium, and a large. I don't add in the whole set because usually my sensory table isn't big enough. So I have usually, again, small, medium, and large measuring cups. Small, medium, and large measuring spoons. I have a spoon, I have a ladle, I have some droppers, again, different sizes. And then you can add in some animals. So these are some I got from Target, but you can also add in animal or ocean animal um, counters too. Any of them work, but look, do you see how they hide? When they drop in, you can't see them. You can see the octopus's head, but look, they drop, so they will have to find them in the water because again, it's you can't see through it. It's so cool. I love, 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 love this bio color. So much fun. Now, you could use this for a ton of different things. You could also use this for pond, um, like put frogs and like all the pond life animals in here or just fish. Um, I have these little fishies that would be really fun too. Um, those are from Amazon. They're in my Amazon storefront. Um, any water animals, ocean animals, pond animals, fish. So, so fun with this bio color. Okay, hold on. <laughs> put this in here. All right. I'm going to dump this out and we're going to try another one. And it doesn't really stain, it doesn't stain your tub. You may have to like wipe it down with like a, um, I don't know, what's it called? Paper towel or something. But otherwise, the water doesn't stain your hands. It doesn't stain your tubs or, um, or anything. All right, let's, let's fill it up again. Because you're going to have so much fun. Okay, so. There's one. And I think too, sometimes when we're doing um, water playing the sensory table, I think people think it needs to be like super, super full. <laughs> and it doesn't have to, it maybe has to be like a fourth of the way. Like, I think that's really all the water you need. It doesn't have to be insanely full. Now I will tell you a funny story. So again, you wanna dump your water at the end of every day because otherwise little, little germies will grow in it and you will have all kinds of yummy bacteria in it that well, not yummy, gross bacteria that no one wants. Um, 
So when I have my sensory table, um, and when I put water in the sensory table, the whole class uses it the whole day. Or again, I make individual ones and usually two or three kids use it at a time. But um, one morning we came in and we were doing, we had water in our sensory table. And our, <laughs> the sensory table we had, had a, like a nozzle in the bottom. So you untwisted it, let all the water out, right? We were just sleepy, I guess, in the morning and we didn't put the nozzle back on. We dumped two big buckets of water in it because it was a larger sensory table. And all of a sudden we just hear, shh, all the water was going through because we didn't put the nozzle on. So put your nozzle on your sensory table, otherwise it will go out of your sensory table. So make sure you're awake in the morning. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just, it cracks me up. So. Here's another, we're gonna do another fun, another fun one. So let's do purple. Again, this is just the metallic bio color. Okay. And if you have a, a couple morning friends, you can have them help you make your water because they, they will just love it. And again, just give everybody a whisk and it's just really great fine motor and there's no glitter in here. You can dump it all down the drain because it's not toxic. It's great. Okay, so this is the purple bio color. They have like every color. They also have like gold, which would be really, really fun. So let's say that your goal is to explore measurement and capacity. So I love using like science tools again in the sensory table. So I have these different size beakers Four different you can again you can just do three well, really that's all that's probably gonna fit oh my gosh look at the clip okay so we have those you can also put in these I got these from Amazon okay and then maybe you want to add in a couple funnels so literally this is my sensory table so we have three different size beakers. We have two different size of these, and then we have two funnels. And then maybe you wanna add a couple different purple, because the purple water. You wanna add a couple different droppers, okay? So we are gonna be exploring and filling up, right? Using the really cool, fun water, because you guys can you guys can see it on the video. I'm so excited. I was worried it wasn't gonna show up, but you can see how they're gonna explore how much it takes to fill it up. Maybe they're gonna take this one and they're gonna fill up the bigger one and they're gonna compare and they're gonna be using all kinds of great math vocabulary as they're playing and manipulating. You can say that we're being scientists in, this, in the sensory table today and we're gonna be using science speakers and things and they're gonna make you can see they're gonna make potions whatever your little learners will love make up that story and tell them that's what they're gonna be doing in the science table but oh my gosh you guys isn't this like the most fun way ever to explore capacity and liquids and funnels and how to use all of these sciencing tools like this is a very engaging science table. It's like, it looks like so, so much fun. You could also use these in there. And again, these are really hard to use. And especially when you're doing color mixing, these can be, um, droppers can be tricky to use. So again, practice using all of your science tools in the sensory table. So we're gonna take these out for a minute. And these funnels I just get from Amazon. I know the Dollar Tree or Dollar 25 Tree also has funnels. Um, a lot of my funnels and my measuring cups and measuring spoons are usually from the Dollar Tree or Dollar, Dollar 25 Tree. So we have this beautiful water. You can also put things like, you know, all the little trays that we love for Play-Doh trays. These are also really fun to put in the sensory table. And you can just put smaller little tools. So we have a smaller dropper and they can practice just filling it up. They can practice using just a measuring scoop, spoon, sorry. And again, we're turning that wrist 
You can use little, the smaller droppers. It doesn't always have to be big, like big giant things to fill up. It can be like small things too. Um, also another really fun thing in the science table. This is those like, um, it's one of those things from the Dollar Tree or Dollar 25 tree. It's for like popsicles. So it had like popsicle toppers on it. But look how cool this is in the sensory table. And they can just like fill up each one. And it kind of floats. And once it gets more liquid in it, it starts to sink. But even if you had like little things in here, I don't know, like, I don't know, like little mini erasers or something. Or let's say you had these little fish in there. They could put those in there too. Okay. So this is a great alternative. Um, or something fun to put in the sensory table. Anything that's clear, really, you can put in your sensory table. So I want to also show you that you can also color your water with liquid watercolor. And again, you don't have to have it super, super full. Because I feel like sometimes when you have it really, really full, I feel like um, it splashes a lot more and more it's on the floor, which is dangerous. That's the other thing I want to remind you of. If you do have water in, the, in your um, sensory table, make sure you have a towel um, close to the ground or something so that way students can um, help you make sure there's no puddles on the ground because we don't want anyone falling and getting hurt. Okay, so this is just, oh, that, that bottle's empty. Okay, all right, so we're just going to use liquid watercolor for this one. And I want to kind of show you the difference which little liquid watercolor is kind of like just like food coloring so if you don't have liquid watercolor it's just green okay and then let's add a little bit of blue because we're gonna make a pond okay so if you use liquid liquid watercolor or if you use um, food coloring, it's not, you'll be able to see through the water. Do you, see, you, do you see how you can kind of like see through the table? So when you use paint or biocolor paint, which is from Discount School Supply, you, can, um, you can't see through it. But let's say you wanna do a frog thing or pond. Put some rocks in the bottom. Because again, this one you can see through. And then I like taking foam and well, let me put a little one more thing of water in there so you guys can see better how, but they float. I have little, these, so these I just cut from foam, right? So we have some little lily pads. I have rocks on the bottom. I would probably put some more rocks on the bottom. Why not? So now we have some rocks and we have our lily pads. I wrote numbers on these, as you can see, but if you don't want numbers on them, you don't have to. Again, make your sensory table to meet the needs of your students. So if your students need to practice counting, put numbers on your sensory table or on your <laughs> lily pads, okay? So what you could do is get some little like frog, like mini erasers, and then they could put those on top. Now, these are just some little frogs I have. I think, okay, you guys, look, I think they're like pencil toppers, really. They're like counters. So we have some little frogs. Now, you can also use these frogs. I know you guys have seen these in some of my sensor tables. These are from the Dollar Tree, so these work too. Okay, but do you see how they fit on the top? Now, again, if you don't have those, use any kind of frog that you have. And again, if you don't want to put numbers on them, you don't have to. But they can explore, sink and float. They can put the frogs on top and explore a pond in um, habitat. So we're sneaking in some science. But look how much this is. I like, again, I like doing different things in the water table so they can um, explore different things. This water is see-through, so they can see the rocks at the bottom. The biocolor paint, they couldn't see what was in the water, so they would have to like kind of hunt for it with their fingers, so it'd be more of like a five senses um, activity, but this one, they can see the bottom. 
So again, it's just really, really fun. Again, it's super easy to mix it up and make it really, really engaging. You can use what you have. Now, another thing I love about water is, you know those like foam letters that are on those puzzles that we get from like the Dollar Tree? These are also great in a sensory table. So what you could do is you could write letters on the lily pads and they could match them. Or you would just have the letters in there instead of the lily pads. And then they could put the frogs on the letters. And it's a really fun way to sneak in some literacy into their um, into their water plate, or you can have a couple of both. Okay. So again, same sensory table. We're just mixing it up, doing some different things with it. These are also great to use with foam blocks in the water table or with the pool noodles that are cut up. These are really, really fun. So again, tons and tons of fun water play sensory table ideas for you guys. I hope these were a ton of fun. Um, for you to see and I hope you guys try some of them in your classroom um, I couldn't just just so you know I couldn't see all the questions that were coming up tonight for whatever reason gotta love Facebook sometimes right so if you have um, so if you have any questions please make sure you leave them in the comments for me and we will try and answer them for you guys but I hope you guys love these really fun exciting um, well, as exciting as like the sensory table can be, but I know your students will love them. My students have loved these water tables that I've done in my classroom before. If you're going to try one, make sure you try the pom-pom one. I would say that one is one of my students' favorite water tables of like all time. That one is like one of their like top favorites and you can add in pom-poms to anything. Like you could even add in some pom-poms to this water table if you wanted. One. Like it doesn't have to always be, you know, pom-poms and water. You can always add pom-poms to whatever water um, sensory table that you're doing. And again, you know what I like to do? I like to take my pom-poms that I use for the water table. Once they're dry, I put them in a baggie and I put them with my sensory stuff. So that way these are my like water table um, pom-poms. So if you guys want to rewatch this, we will edit this and it will be on YouTube in the next two days. Um, and we are slowly moving all of the Facebook lives over to YouTube. So that way they will be much easier to access. And eventually um, we will be getting a much easier way to find them on my blog too, or on the website. So, but I hope you guys loved these water sensory table, um, ideas for you guys. And if you guys try them out in your classroom, be sure to tag me, Pocket Preschool, in, um, the comments. Um, cause I love to see what you guys are doing in your classrooms. So you guys have an amazing night and I will talk to you soon. Bye.